Good morning, guys. Happy Sunday. Hopefully you've all had an amazing weekend. This is going to be our daily cryptocurrency market update. And as of this Sunday, we're not going to get into anything too technical. Um, we're just really going to be sort of reaffirming where we're at, where I think we're going. Um, we can look at Bitcoin on some smaller timeframes, the daily and the hourly. It looks very weak um, just from a technical point of view. And then if you go to the sort of context of where markets are at right now, there's this kind of ending to a relief rally um, for the markets generally that 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 I think has now came to an end. You know, we looked at this with Mike Wilson's comments from Morgan Stanley when he was urging people to or or essentially um, advising the tactical longs to be closed here as the bear market was going to going to return in earnest. And I think you know we had a lower CPI print this week um and we also had the fed come out and do a 50 so they've moved from 75 to, to to 50 basis points and they may look to move to 25 but really what jerome reiterated and he's continued to reiterate this this is why we've always had a uh, or continued to maintain a sort of more uh, broad bearish outlook um was that he's going to continue to be a lot more restrictive for a lot longer now in yesterday's video we looked at the two-year yields um for the us and said that this kind of dictates things, but there's room for them to go up. And I think actually, you know, looking at the 30-day Fed funds uh, futures market, this is only pricing in 4.5 um, or sorry, 4.37 in terms of a Fed funds rate. It's my opinion they're going to go higher than that, and that this is largely repricing it. Uh, the euro dollars is a little bit more up to date at over 5%. Um, but going into this week, you know, we, we've got news. This was, uh, I didn't find this. Um, this is from Dr. A, Dr. AXBT. The biggest money managers are set to unload $100 billion of stocks in the final week of the year, adding to their sell-off that's snowballed since Jerome's uh, unequivocal message that policy will press on with aggressive tightening at the risk of job cuts and a recession. Um, so this is an article covering it. You know, this is very much the consensus across the board. BlackRock says get ready for a recession unlike any other. What worked in the past won't work now. And it's interesting because a lot of big sort of uh, wealth managers still hold a 60-40 um, split with bonds. Um, and typically a, a portfolio, a traditional sort of portfolio has been something like this 80 20 or 60 40 stocks equities and then bonds as a kind of safety vehicle for your big sort of wealth funds i think there is a mandate for them to hold government debt as well but this actually is not looking like it's going to work they're up there kind of getting more out of stocks and going in something that's a little bit more stable but given the context could perhaps be not very stable which is the bond market um and and it's it's looking like we're going to get quite a bit more offloading um, going into the week ahead. So this is certainly, I think, going to have a downward draft on the crypto market. Crypto sold off significantly more than the stock market. Naturally, it's a higher beta, but I think this has a lot to do with a lot of the sort of circulating Binance news. This is coming on the back end of what we're calling a reasserting or a reasserting dollar after a pullback. You know, this is still a pullback, in my opinion, given the, the, the scope of just how far we've come. I mean, really, in the past year, for, for the dollar, this is insane in terms of a move. Um, and if this reasserts, I mean, the, the, the stage, in my opinion, is very much set for more downside for the crypto space, but we will dive into uh, Bitcoin on, on some smaller time frames. But let's take a little, little look at this. Um, Bloomberg, the world's biggest money managers are set to unload up to $100 billion of stocks in the final, week, in the final few weeks of the year, adding to the sell-off that snowballed since Jerome Powell's cuts uh, or Jerome Powell's speech. Uh, notwithstanding their losses this week, equities gained over the quarter, driving up their value relative to other asset classes and forcing managers with strict allocation mandates to sell them to meet targets. Bonds are likely uh, beneficiaries of the sale by sovereign wealth, pensions and balance mutual fund managers um, looking to replenish their fixed income holdings, according to JP Morgan, uh, Chase and um, a number of others. When December ramps up, sovereign wealth funds could be done, selling roughly $29 billion in equities, while U.S. defined benefit pensions plan uh, would 
need to shift up to 70 billion from equities to bonds to meet their long-term targets and bring them back to September's levels. The pensions and sovereign wealth funds that from uh, form the backbone of the investment community typically rebalance their market exposure every quarter to achieve a mix of 60-40. So BlackRock actually also came out and did a, a look at 2023 and they said that, look, this may not be the play anymore. Um, but this is what I actually think has, has held the market up thus far, certainly the stock market and even the bond market is that you have pension funds that invest every month typically um, that have to kind of keep you know, they, they have a mandate, i.e. 60, 40 bonds, and they have to keep buying this. And I think this is largely what's held the market up from, from crashing. But the problem with this is if the market does crash, even with these continuous buyers, this puts these pension funds and wealth managers in a very negative situation, certainly in regards to pensions that have to make um, targets to pay people out. So, you know, I, I, I want to reiterate this as well, guys. I still think that the capitulation is yet to come. And you're going to say, all in crypto, what are you talking about? You know, we're 76% uh, down, but this is, okay, yes, we've had areas of capitulation due to things like Luna, FTX, which is a rather weak one. You know, there's been a number of other catalysts along the way here. But when, when I'm talking about capitulation, I'm talking about this style capitulation, March 2020 style capitulation, or, you know, using the stock market as a reference. This is March 2020. You know the two thousand and sort of eight moment, um, if you will, or for that matter, the any of these dot com spills. This I still think is to to come, and I think this is going to be largely on the back end of something going seriously wrong. This, of course, yesterday we looked at is probably what's going to lead them to undo interest rates. Maybe the the twos has got to its top, and that would mean that interest rate hiking is is or at least the the um, ends in sight. Um, but when they do pivot, it will be it will be on the back end of bad news, and that will be downside for market so i think we're in this really weird we're sort of just waiting for downside i do think bitcoin still got a real stab lower to come um where it gets to you know we're looking at sort of the 12s 11k area um doesn't have to get that far but you know we've, we've really called this very well but this in my opinion is still somewhat structured so this is you know very tactical i think in its ascent um whereas and, and the thing is with capitulation, typically it's met with strength, right? You know, this was the minor capitulation in China um, back in May 2021. It was met with somewhat strength. This was it went straight into a reversal pattern of a falling wedge. We called all this um, back when it was going on. Nothing here is showing me strength. You know, we're just, we're just basically doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and people are going to be manipulating that. So we've had this spill. Obviously, this is all coming off the back end of um, FTX. Then we've had this recent spill, which was caused on the back end of, you know, this, this rally's kind of, and we've said from down here, this has always been a target. We've ran it. Very common how you run targets. You know, we looked at the falling wedge uh, or the rising wedge that we had essentially drawn and how it was going to play out. Um, if we go down the time frame, so you're just doing a very similar thing right now, you know. You've spilt and you're setting this up. You sp spilt it again. Maybe you come up and get a retest and then you look to find these lows and we look to take out, you know, 16,000 and then make our way back down to 50,000. I think given the backdrop of everything that we've looked at, this is very much likely, you know, this is another article from Goldman Sachs is planning to cut up to 8% of their uh, employees in January. So this is across the board. When it's one company doing it, you can kind of go, okay, it's internal. Um, but this is a sign of... of I think the times that we're moving into, people are getting rid of staff and costs because they know everything's going to become a lot more costly. And that's going to unfortunately be more liquidity taken out of markets. And I think actually markets are under pricing interest rates right now um, and, and, and where the Fed are actually going to go to. They're kind of continuously looking for some sort of relief, which is not surprising considering the markets have had nothing but relief since 2008. Um and now I think they're going to look for it, not find it, and then be forced to make decisions on the back end of it, which I think is all going to come to the detriment of the crypto market. Not got a lot coming up this week. Uh, it's just sort of internal data. Um, but this was something I want to sort of leave you guys on, because even though, yeah, we do think there's more downside, I am and have always remained very bullish on the sort of trajectory of blockchain and crypto. You know, I do think that this industry and being an active investor now, um, you're, you're not too late. 
you know, people think they're late to the party with crypto. This journey has not even begun. We've seen no real adoption of the crypto space yet, and that's all still to come. This was an article from Cointelegraph, central banks to set standards on uh, crypto exposure. So the Bank of International Settlements. The new standard limits crypto reserves among uh, banks to 2% by 2025 uh, and goes into effect on January 2025. So this is obviously a while off, but this is the way that things are going. You've got to think that no, you know, we're looking at mutual funds and pensions. They they largely, uh, yeah, we know there was a pension in, in, in Canada that had um, exposure to Bitcoin, but largely funds, managers, you know, they, they don't touch crypto. Um, this is because it's unregulated. It is going to get regulated. It's probably going to be more promptly regulated now that we've seen the FTX crash or, or the FTX Trojan horse is what I'm calling it. Um, and this is going to have repercussions, potentially negative to begin with, but I think is really going to set it up for what I know it is. Uh, and that is a, a new asset class. You know, it, it's going to be the asset class, I think, uh, moving forwards. I think it's where we're going to see probably the most innovation um, out of anywhere. And that's going to attract big bucks. And we've not seen any real kind of appreciation for the cryptocurrency market yet. We've seen it really just essentially trade like a speculative a, a speculative equity, um, get caught up in the print thumb from March 2020 onwards, which is why we saw the, the, the price get the prices get to where they got to. But I think that, you know, we've not seen the adoption phase yet. And that's still to come. Uh, and hopefully you guys are all going to be a part of that. So if you've enjoyed this video, guys, a like, as always, appreciate it, so as a comment. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next one. Have a fantastic Sunday. Catch you in the next one.